Here in Nigeria, we have uh, two functioning TVET centers. It used to be three. We moved one to uh, a different uh, TVET center in Ondo, Southwest Nigeria, where we have courses like electrical, mechanical, woodwork and furniture. The school didn't close down, but it is functioning alongside that of Ondo. In Onicha as well, Southeast Nigeria, we probably have a TVET center and both TVET center are doing well at the moment. We try as much as possible, you know, uh, in accordance with the seven missions of the JSO, uh, you know, that is across Africa, provided by DBTEC Africa. What we do is try to understand the need of the labor market, try to help young people to find their career paths, telling them about the importance of technical education, the importance of TVET. We do that in collaboration with other stakeholders because we don't just train in our centers. What we do is we try to give the training, you know, that is market driven. We train as much as possible so that when those we train go out, they easily find jobs. Achievements so far and contributions. Uh, so far, we have uh, trained over 6,000 graduates who are highly skilled and who are also competent. Because today, the world needs competent technicians. If you understand pictorial analysis, everything that will make that chip a hen or a cock is already inside it. What you needed to do is to feed that thing that is inside it. It will blow up. And if you make the mistake of not managing it very well, it can die off at this point. But if you manage it well, it can actually create multiples of itself. That is about vocational and technical education. Training for specific vocation has existed for thousands of years. You know, from the beginning of the creation of man, you can check it. I actually understand that Jesus Christ was a technical because the Father worked. Oh, yes, certainly. A lot of ladies here learn how to cook first of all from their mother isn't it true yes. today we have subordinated polytechnic for university they are not the same thing for goodness sake they are not the same thing no one is inferior to the other we must accept technical education the three things we need to do okay we must accept technical education for what it is the headquarters is in Nairobi Kenya it is the very sad and the responsibility of making sure we are still relevant technically across Africa. As a basis for the introduction, we have 100, what is it, 97 technical schools across Africa. 97 technical schools across Africa. Functioning one, we are doing well. In Nigeria, like you showed, we have two. So, from those schools in Africa, assisted greatly, you know, uh, in making sure the job service office functions. Education and knowledge has always been of great importance to the family enterprise Festo. Since more than 55 years now, we are promoting education and skills development for productivity, we call it education at work, and employability, we call it educa um, education for work. Before we start, let's have some observations. This is a statement from the Director General of the African Development Bank. And he's pointing developing nations at value for everything they produce, while poor nations export raw materials. So we are still at the stage where we export raw materials. But not only in Nigeria, also many African countries. So it is important that Africa must work for itself, its people, and not exporting wealth to others. Looking to the figure in 2014, which it's very, very scary, 1.1 billion. 1.1 billion means 1.1 billion young people are at the age for employment. While the industry will only grow by 7% per year over the next five years, which generates only 40 million jobs. What is required to make this happen? Um, I shared only a lesser number uh, would participate, and that's what we see 
that accounts for the difference between 130 companies and the 50 companies that eventually sent uh, traders. And the project kicked off the following year in 2013. All the independent um, assessors of the curriculum confirmed that this curriculum was extremely competitive, relevant to the Nigerian um, ecosystem, and also um, replicable and also comparable to any curriculum outside of Nigeria. So it's very competitive and market driven. Usually, as with any initiative, uh, the level of enthusiasm sometimes you know, varies. And so you will have, after the initial flush of excitement, uh, some companies will drop off because one of the things that was clearly stated was compliance in terms of whatever uh, the requirements of every participating company. The standards were not dropped for any company. It was important to ensure that compliance was maintained at the required levels. The event which was actually held at the LCCI ground, LCCI training center at Ikeja, saw an array of actors from the TV sectors, industry players, civil society organizations, non-government organizations, government officials, private and public professionals, TV providers and development actors. These very essential stakeholders roundtable, sponsored by VIS, an Italian NGO, and executed by the PDO office, brought to light the labor gaps and the necessity of TVET in Nigeria. Keynote speakers for the day, <clears throat> we are drawn from an array of players. Uh, we had the engineer Charles Ilebunam, the CEO of Asterix Concepts, who dealt on developing industrial manpower via technical and vocational training. We had Mr. Benga Debija, Director General Nigeria Chairman Business Association, who dealt on industry and training, pilot experience of the German dual system in Africa. The stakeholders round table brought to light the need to always bring stakeholders together to look at labor gaps and how TVET can actually be promoted in Nigeria in order to help young boys and girls find a positive living. Thank you.